Veteran politician retired Canada Dr. Kiza Besige blames uh, the Kitezi landfill disaster on government's failure to listen to the cries of uh, those uh, who spoke uh, before and uh, gave re environmental reports um, a lot earlier. He says that the executive should uh, take the bidding rather than carry the blame on to implementing institutions. In the case of Kitezi, you see, the failure is at many levels because uh, you know, those who were around and still following what was going on will know the kind of protest the people of that area made to try and stop that place being used as a landfill for garbage. This is not a limited matter of Kitezi. It's a failure of state. We have a failed state where the functions of government really are not being served. And uh, the role of a state is first of all to plan, to implement plans, to mm. monitor the implementation of those plans, to forecast what may happen, you know, and uh, plans, the state is very clear in what happens. The planning is done by policy organs and implemented by the executive. Now, uh, the government has been accused of failing uh, to find a permanent solution to address uh, the government burden at Kitezi. These as efforts to establish a garbage recycling plant are still laid on a barren rock with critics saying the government has adamantly failed uh, to copy good practices uh, from other countries despite those in power claiming they are still on the move to ensure that garbage is collected and recycled for a common cause. The debate at the disrupt Kitez best garbage landfill is slowly turning bitter with fumes of blame game piling up on who dropped the ball that resulted into death of innocent lives. This is the only national landfill we have. And you can see the dire state in which it is. This is totally not politics. Let us save our Ugandans. It's our duty to save Uganda. Kampala leadership blamed government of failing to actualize garbage policy and decisions that called for the establishment of the garbage recycling plant. Solid waste management in Kampala is one of the unfunded sectors. We advise that they should use the modern technology. The way people in Rwanda, uh, the government of Rwanda handled that problem. We have capacity. All we need is discipline and I said of sorting. It is managing from you as your household. With waste collected shooting in billions of tonnage, critics say efforts to actualize investors' dreams to turn such a waste into products was crippled on selfish gains. We need a solution and a solution is to be taken as per now. Yeah, why should we have uh, cow dung, skins, hooves uh, coming to Kampara when you are not going to eat them? In 2018, when Gen Pharmacy was at the epicenter of KCC leadership, a $1 million garbage recycling project was commissioned at one cocoa recycling site sitting on 3,100 square meters of land and close to the city's sewage treatment plant in the industrial area. This was to recycle plastics and organic garbage from the markets and turn them into fertilizers, among others. Although it was to be implemented under Lake Victoria Environment Management Projects, the fruits of such a facility still remains hung in the space. With Kitezi now a death trap, the Minister for Kampala, Hajak Minister Kamanda, says all is not lost. We can also have gone very far, but at least we have one company which is underway. That's the waste energy. But we will also welcome all other companies which can assist us in this issue. I'm now joined uh, by the State Minister for uh, Disaster Preparedness and uh, Refugees, uh, the Honourable Lillian Abe. She is with me. Uh, Honourable, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, um, uh, the number we now do here is 21, uh, then 22. What is the right number uh, for the fatalities so far? Um, thank you very much, Samson, and uh, good evening, viewers. The right number is 22 dead, dead bodies recovered so far. Okay. Um,
how big is the problem of um, uh, disaster uh, as far as um, uh, the nation is concerned? And, and what can be done, uh, if you may, to prepare ourselves a little better? Is, is there even such a thing as being pre prepared enough? Well, um, Samson, it's uh, unfortunate and I want to send my condolences to the families affected. Well, as I have always said, issues of disaster, is, um, it, it's, it's, it happens and they all require different interventions. And in this particular incidence, it, 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 it is tragic. And it's uh, something that really, really affected quite a number of people. But upon um, getting the information um, on what happened, the government had to put in place a team to straight away roll down into emergency response to rescue um, those who are still alive and the, 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 the bodies that were, you know, uh, covered. And we were, happy, we were lucky that we rescued some people who are still alive, 13 people, and uh, we are in the process to, you know, to see avenues on how we can get out um, a number of the bodies and we hope probably if we can still get someone alive that would be good to get all this done it, it is important that uh, politics is gotten out of the whole idea as as we work now uh, are we working or are you working to make sure that there's no politics in this and that everybody all cards are on the deck as the english would have it well, this doesn't call for a political, um, you know, antagonism in any way. And I'm happy to um, note that we have been working together with the team, the local leaders on, on, um, in Chitezi. For the past three days, the area member parliament has been there, the Lord Mayor has been there, and the local leaders have been there. Where, from the start, we had um, frictions here and there where some of the local leaders wanted to push the people to to go into, you know, giving a hand in, in you know, supporting the activity, but that was quite risky, and we couldn't allow that, and they felt maybe we are blocking their leaders, but I'm happy that at one point they accepted. Now, the point that we need to speak one voice is the point of relocation. Right now, we have demarcated an area, which is the buffer zone, that we need people to leave that area, 200 meters away from where the landfill is. We need people who fall within the buffer areas to leave because we want a similar incidence to happen again. And we have started receiving people coming to the tents that we provided as government because we have the relief food provided, we have the non-food items also provided, and we also have the medical facilities and a team from gender to put support with them with the psychological support. So my appeal is that the community within the buffer zone should not stay there. There are those who are saying, no, we are not leaving, we shall stay here. Life first. Other issues will be addressed later, but we wouldn't want to have a similar situation. And because you refuse to listen to the plea of government and taking over the alternatives, and you, you again get, become a victim. Finally, Honorable, um, there are a lot of land um, fields across the country, but the question I, I would like to put to you and the nation, wants to know, is this now an opportunity for us to work out a sustainable way of turning garbage into energy like is done elsewhere, or are we going to miss this opportunity, go back to landfills, and then, like government sometimes does, walk like an elephant through its processes? Well, um, you see, the, the population in Kampala or in, in these urban areas increases every single minute. So it's, it's very clear that um, the Chitezi land field has reached a point where we have to decommission it and we have to look at alternatives. And uh, KCC has been involved in looking for alternatives, um, in alternative land where they can dump the rubbish that they collect from the city centre. But this has been back and forth because of disagreements and legal issues here and there. But the best alternative that we all agree that we need to look at converting this energy to, to support the energy sector. We can convert this into, you know, into energy, and that is where the government is looking at, and I think the president did mention that that is now the priority that we should look at, and we will work towards achieving that, because even if we get quite a number of dumping grounds, it may not still be sustainable. What is sustainable is 
getting another solution which is clean energy that is converting the, the rubbish in, into clean energy. Uh, Honorable, thank you so much for making time out of a very, very busy um, uh, set of days uh, for you. Perhaps uh, it's about time we let you go out of this so you catch some sleep if you can.